Now it's time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a Christian perspective on the speed of light is astrophysicist, Dr. Jeff Swearing. Welcome back, Jeff. Krista, it's good to be here. Always enjoy. <laughs> now, we at Reasons to Believe hold to kind of the mainstream age for the universe. So maybe we should start there. Is like, mm -hmm. how old is the universe anyways? Yeah, we do. We think the scientists largely have the timing of things correct. And so we think the universe is about 14 billion years old. Earth's about four and a half billion years old. Humanity's a few hundred thousand years old at the most. So Now, there's a lot of different ways that we arrive at the age of the universe. And mm -hmm. we're just going to talk about one of the ways. Right. And these are kind of multiple independent lines of evidence. But one of the lines of evidence is the issue of light travel mm -hmm. time. So maybe you could give us a little crash course on, on how this works and how this help scientists know how old the, the universe is. Well, it's, I mean, you know, as Hugh's fond of saying, you know, astronomers know nothing about the present. All we know is about the past. And it's just the same phenomena as when you go out and look at a thunderstorm. You know, you look out there, you see the lightning, you wait and you count, and you can tell how long the thunder gets there, and that tells you how far away the object is. Well, that's because the speed of sound is much less than the speed of light. So it looks like the light happens instantaneously, and then you can tell how long it takes the sound to travel here. Well, when you're looking out across the distances of space, light actually has a finite speed, and so light takes a long time to travel. So it takes about one second for the light to get from the moon to the Earth, it takes about eight and a half minutes from the sun to the Earth, and you get out to the Andromeda galaxy, you're two and a half million years now for the light to get from the Andromeda galaxy to us. So it's a way of measuring how far away things are and what's going on and how far into the past are we looking. So when I hear on the news, that the some star is three billion light years away. What that's telling me is that the light was traveling for three billion years before we saw it here on Earth. Yeah, and there's a little ambiguity as you get further away because you know three billion light years away. Uh, really, what they're saying is that light has been traveling for three okay. billion years. It's taken the light that long to get here, and so when you get away a little further, it gets a little more complicated. But that's effectively what it means. Okay, so now I immediately can see a bit of a conundrum here because. <laughs> Uh, some of my Christian friends believe that the universe is only thousands of years old, mm -hmm. and yet you're telling me that the Andromeda galaxy is millions of light years away. Right. So how do we begin to... How, how do you hear Christians try to get around the light travel problem? Well, in the past, it was some of the argument was just things aren't that far away. But as we've kind of grown in our ability to make measurements, even our galaxy is roughly 100,000 light years across. So light from the other edge of the galaxy would take more than 100,000 years to reach us. But once you get out to more distant things, clearly uh, you're millions and billions of light years away. And so one of the arguments that has been made is say, you know what, uh, God created these things to be seen. So when he created them in the creation week, he put their light in transit. So we're not seeing light having traveled that far. We're seeing the light beams, just kind of the front end of them, if you will, so that we can actually see what's going on because it wouldn't do us any good to know about stars if we couldn't see them. Uh, so they were basically, the light was created in transit is the, the terminology used. So I, another way I've heard it said is God kind of made the light on its way. Right, exactly. Okay, so now we, we're both Christians here and we know that God is a God of miracles. He can do anything. Mm -hmm. Isn't, couldn't that be the way that God did that? Well, I mean, yes, if you're, if it's a statement of what could God do, God's the one in charge. He gets to create how he so chooses as long as he's consistent with his character. The question is not what could God do, but what did God do? And so if God did create light in transit, presumably as we would measure it, we would see evidence of that's what it is. And the problem is when we look at light, we see evidence that it's actually traveled that far as well. So that would, you, you kind of get into this inconsistency where what we measure isn't reflective of what God's done. And that leads to kind of a bad theology or gives us a bad picture of who God is. Well, it would be a little peculiar if I'm going out and I'm making measurements, if I can't even trust my measurements. It, yes. And, and yet God tells me in Psalm 19 and Romans 1 that he has declared his glory through creation. So I would kind of 
intuitively expect it to be a reliable mm -hmm. revelation of who he is. And then when I went out and measured things, I would get reliable results. So that right. seems a little peculiar if we're measuring things, but it's not a reliable not, new, not yeah. accurate. Well, and and even you know you get into a little bit of detail here. Is you know I studied a galaxy when I was in graduate school. It was Markarian four twenty one. It's a galaxy that's four hundred million light years away from us, and so the I would say the light has been traveling to us for four hundred million years. Um, but in uh, the mid '90s, there was this time where the the particular light I was looking at, which were gamma rays, uh, was at this baseline level, and it jumped way up, a factor of about 30, and then it dropped back down in a, in a relatively short period of time. Now, if God created the light in transit, that would work if all we saw is this steady stream of light. But this, where it jumped up and down, that's a signature of an event that happened on that object. Mm. And so, if God created the light in transit, He created in transit, this record of an event that never happened. That's uh, even more peculiar. Uh, yes, it yeah. becomes very problematic. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, you know, there are people used to say, well, God created the fossils in the ground too. That, like I said, you get into this place where you're getting, you're impugning the character of God if you're not really careful how you say that. Okay, well, that's helpful. Now, my non-Christian friends, how, how would they be likely to respond to the I idea that God just made light on its way. Like if, if I were to use that argument with a non-Christian friend, it's sort of an appearance of age argument. Mm -hmm. How would they likely hear that? How would they well, respond? Well, I mean, I, if I were that, or my guess is what they would say is at least two things. One, it sounds very ad hoc. It's like, you know, if we want to go out and study the universe to just kind of throw in, oh, hey, well, this is the way it is. And it's like, there's no way to test that or what's going on. It's like, it just seems very ad hoc. Why are you doing that? It's it's almost like you're making up things to, see, to say the Bible's true instead of pointing towards the evidence, pointing towards the Bible being true. The other aspect of it, and it's what you alluded to, is like, if God just made everything in transit, when we're making measurements of what's going on out there, what are we measuring? Because it's now no longer a record of what's actually happened. And so, you know, you're undermining, you're, you're kind of throwing in this ad hoc idea and, and ultimately you're undermining the field of astronomy and astrophysics and all this sort of stuff. And so that would, you know, if I were a non-Christian and I liked science, that would be a big red flag that, okay, there's something wrong here. Very good. Well, thanks for helping us kind of work that through a little bit. And I do want to encourage you, go check out Jeff's blog. It's called Impact Events at Reasons.org.